This is 99% craps. Hard 10, hard 10. There's the number. I'll take the full odds in the 10, 200 on the hard way. The limit on all the numbers, 250 on the 11. Thank you very much. Say, you played this game before. Just once. Welcome to the Red Eye Gamblers podcast. High above the second largest city, west of the Mississippi. Two chronic craps players, talking craps, playing craps, thinking craps. This is 99% craps. Coming up on 99% craps, here we go. Finally off to scout in Lake Charles, Louisiana. On the way, we discuss casino openings across the US. Also, talk about pros and cons of different casinos amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Then we finish with post-trip scouting reports. But first, which casinos are we scouting? Thursday, June 17th, 2020, episode 23. The Red Eye Gamblers present 99% Craps. Well, and I guess uh, welcome back. Uh, it has been quite a while uh, since uh, we've been on and even attempted to uh, go to a casino because they shut everything down. So uh, anyway, welcome back. Um, I am, uh, we are getting ready to go to the casino. Um, one person's going virtually and the other person is going live. Yeah, I am sitting in the comforts of my home at my kitchen table and uh, you are going to uh, drive out there and uh, make a pass and scout out the, um, the casinos. I am going to uh, stay safe because I am a little bit higher risk than some people, so I am uh, hiding in my cave and I am uh, <laughs> eagerly anticipating a scouting report on what's going on in Lake Charles. Yeah, no, we've been uh, paying attention to everybody else. We were... Uh... I guess initially excited when we heard that uh, Lake Charles was opening back up. I think they opened the weekend before uh, Memorial Day. So they've been open now for about three weeks, I think. Yeah. And uh, so going up on a uh, weekday, Wednesday uh, scouting trip to uh, see what they're doing. And then which casinos are you thinking about going to today? Well, I'm definitely going, uh, starting off at the uh, Golden Nugget and then uh, walking next door to La Berge. Okay. I do not think, I might do a drive by over at Isla Capri, but probably not going to Isla Capri, and we'll talk about why later. And then okay. uh, probably going to Cachada uh, as well, since I've got the time. And uh, right. you know, I think we can go through probably why, uh, pros and cons of each casino initially of what we think. Uh, on why uh, why we're not going to Isla Capri or why I'm not going to Isla Capri and, and uh, why Cachada could be a, a possibility. Well, you know, with me, uh, having gone through what I've gone through in the last year, I've definitely paid attention on how to stay healthy through all this. And we've discussed very, from the very beginning, one of the very first things you said was, you know, we needed to make sure if we were even around people that we needed to make sure that we were outside and open spaces. Yeah, yeah, no confined spaces. If anything, that's the one thing that uh, uh, crowds, well, crowds inside confined spaces, even worse. Right. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so then that eliminates thing, places with, with lower ceilings, you know, places with closer walls. Uh, so you want the big open spaces, the big... Uh, tall ceilings and, and big space, open spaces. And well, so and I think the three, the three casinos you talked about definitely have those. Cause I mean, uh, Cachada in itself is just one large dome. Right, right. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it, yeah, it's, it's got this big kind of big atrium kind of space or, or you know, it's, it's like 30, 40 foot, uh, space. And then it, you know, as it goes to the, the restaurants and the food areas and the slot machines, you know, it, it gets lower in some areas, but well, it'll be interesting to see which uh, restaurants are even open. You know, I would assume almost that the casinos are only running, you know, uh, they're staggering which ones are opening would be my guess. That is correct. I've already gone through uh, a couple of websites just to make sure that they were open and what kind of things they were doing. And, yeah, they're basically saying all the buffets are closed and, you know, um, maybe one or two of the, the food places are open. Uh, right, and then yeah, it's, it's, and then different days, you know, different different uh, things too. So weekday on a Wednesday, you know, there's probably not going to be much open. Yeah, 
uh, that's what I was thinking, definitely. And, I, and I'll be interested to know if all the bars are open. Yeah, no, I know. Um, I've, I've, that's the thing. We've only heard rumors and not a lot. Um, you know, there's, I know people have gone out to Lake Charles, but haven't really seen any reporting. And so uh, since that is our neck of the woods, we figured we definitely had to go. Um, so that's another reason why we're going is to report back to y'all as far as uh, what they're doing and uh, how serious everybody's taking it. Because it seems well, like Vegas and some other places uh, aren't taking it seriously. But then again, I heard a Bla- I've, I keep seeing Bellagio is the one that's taking it the most seriously. That I think that you have to wear masks on the floor. Well, I guess- I definitely have been watching some videos uh, with with other you know with YouTubers reporting uh, on the casinos openings in downtown Vegas and on the Strip, and I will say all the employees, all the staff are definitely masking up. Yeah. Uh, but but I will say, and they're definitely doing they you know the casinos are doing their part of the social distancing by turning off you know every other uh, slot machine or the ones in the middle yeah, or whatever have you or putting up Pepsi glass. And, yeah. Yeah, removing, you know, there's only maybe three chairs at a, at a blackjack table instead of, you know, six. Uh, so, you know, the casinos are doing their part, but I will say, from the videos that I have seen, I have not seen many masks on the people that are there. Yeah, it looks like it's instead of one in four, more like one in ten now. Which it's, is a, Yeah, a I little... mean, it's sliding in that direction for sure. Yeah, so, but, I mean, that, that's what people want to do, that's what people want to do, and I don't need to go there. So. Well, and you know, I mean, to a certain extent, I can almost understand it because when you go to Vegas or, you know, even Lake Charles or a casino, you go there to drink and smoke and have a good time. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. We're, what amenities are there besides just throwing your money away? Yeah. You can't really do that with a, with a, a mask on. I mean, I think at one point you, you uh, found a picture of a guy or uh, heard a story of a guy who <laughs> yeah. was uh, smoking a cigar, but he just put a slice through his yeah, mask. Yeah, he cut a hole in his, yeah, it was somewhere, I don't know, maybe in South Dakota, or, you know, you know, the, those, the state, the northern midwestern states, uh, they might not, you know, I think South Dakota never closed, you know, or if they did, they closed for a short period of time, and, uh, you know, so, yeah, I saw one tweet of a picture of a guy who had cut a hole <laughs> in his mask in order to fit a cigar in it. Which could have just been for the picture, you know. I, I didn't see a video, so I didn't know that he actually did it. But you know, the could have been a setup. But you know, it was kind of funny. Well, what are your plans on how are you how are you going to plan on scouting the uh, casinos? Oh well, I don't know. I mean, um, pretty much going to take a look around, see what the crowd looks like, and then kind of look at, at how they're treating the entrances, how are they're treating everybody coming in and out of the property. You know, obviously, you know, the, the staff will be masked up, but then how are they treating, you know, the customers? And what kind of customer service are they offering? Are all the Lake Charles casinos, are they taking temperatures at, at the entrance of the I, casino? I don't know. I don't know. That's the thing. Um, I think a couple have said that, but I haven't seen everybody. So, I mean, that's that's, that's the real, you know, the other, other, that's why we're going out, why I'm going out here. In order to see yeah. what they're doing. And, and compare it to downtown and, and the Strip and, and, you know, the other casinos that have been opening up. I think Atlantic City still hasn't opened up yet, so they're still coming. Um, but I guess it depends on when I edit this podcast and get it out. But I'm going to try to get this out soon so it stays relevant. Because, um, yeah, there's no point in me <laughs> doing this and then four weeks later uh, put it out and everything's changed. Right. Well, you know, I'm really thinking after, you know, uh, reading numerous articles and watching a lot of videos that uh, casinos have just, they got, you know, as soon as they open, they got almost back up and running like they used to. I mean, obviously yeah. you can't sit as many people well, at a table, but. I think that's the big hashtag is Vegas is back. You know, that's that's what everybody's saying. And, and but, you know, they're, they're not 100% back. It's still, you know, you know, Caesars only had two properties open, you know, then they're going to open one more. So. You know, I, like, I don't think Planet Hollywood, I don't think everything was open, you know. Like, they don't think Bally's well, was open. And if know? I had a large family in Vegas on the Strip, I think I would I would uh, also open in staggering movements. Um, I mean, that makes sense business-wise. Well, I mean, they've got to get back to, you know, is it just people driving there or people flying there? I mean, I think they reduced 
plane travel, you know, so they don't have the same amount of flights that were coming in and out of Vegas. So, I mean, they got to reestablish that kind of, you know, uh, pipeline. Right. Is, is, the, is the amount of airfare matching the uh, wishes of the people yeah. to, no. to Vegas? Yeah. Well, and then, you know, Vegas is missing out on all the convention stuff, you know, Monday oh, through Thursday. Oh, sure. That's probably, that's probably the biggest part of oh, it. Oh, it is. It is. That's that's their bread and butter. I mean, the weekends are fun, but it's their Monday through Thursday where they, they make all their money. I mean, there's no more buyouts of, of restaurants and nightclubs and things like that, you know. I mean, this is summertime. They should have, be having pool parties and shit like that. And I think that, yeah. that's not going to happen. Well, in the pool party, well, I mean, yeah, it, I mean, it's not supposed to happen. We'll see. And, how, and you can't, you know, even if you say twenty-five or fifty percent, how are you controlling that? Yeah. Well, you, it's it's still a matter of social distancing. Yeah. You know? Well. So, and that's that's what's at the, you know, so at the craps table, you know, some of the things we've seen are have been nightmarish, and uh, I think right now Bellagio stands out of most respectable way to handle this with plexiglass. You know, the pictures from the Bellagio, you know, are, are really nice. You know, the thick plexiglass, you know, almost like the, the bulletproof kind of glass, you know, like a half inch or th- inch thick. And well, they definitely polished. spend some money on it. Well, they should. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's for the safety of their employees and their customers. So, but yeah, so you've got these dividers, and so they section it out to three people on an end of, of one end of the table. So you can get six so players total. That's opposed to a lot of places that are just making a three-person end the maximum. Well, the, uh, taught... the other things I've seen have been um, they put like a uh, uh, a spot on the rail so that you can't like uh, it, you know no player or player one or you know they, they mark a spot on the rail where you can't They've marked play. marked it out. Yeah. yeah, and so they only allow three slots. And so that gives you six people at a table. So that's another reason why I'm curious about Cachada. Cachada's got the 16-foot tables. So how are yeah, they? Yeah, they have they have some of the largest tables we've ever played at. Yeah, well, around here, yeah. I think well, the I the think other the other big one is in Boomtown in Biloxi. <laughs> isn't LaBerge the same size? No, I mean, so I think it's 12 footers at uh, Golden Nugget and I Like a Pre, and then 14 footers at uh, Le Bears, and then 16 footers at, um, or 16 or 18 at, uh, Quixada. Mm. But I mean, but that's the scale, you know, the, the, the smaller ones are Isla Capri and, uh, Golden Nugget. And then Quixada's got the biggest. So, and they've got five tables, so I'm kind of curious how they, if they spread things out, you know, do they just have one table working? You know, I, how, it's, it's a matter of, I don't know, I mean, what does what does Wednesday day look like when none of the bartenders and waitresses have been you know none of the hospitality people have cash? Right. You well, know? I will say one thing. I bet you that all the dealers uh, that do the card games and do craps are extremely happy about wearing a mask. So now they don't have to smile. <laughs> that is true. You, uh, now you, they don't have to fake smile. They can just, you know, and they can they can stick their tongue out at people. I mean, they can do all kinds of stuff behind that mask. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Be well, I also wonder if any uh, any staff at casinos since they've been opened have has has gotten have tested sick. positive. Yeah, that's the thing. I yeah. I don't know, and that's the one thing I didn't do. Maybe you can do that in between me getting here and, and me leaving is maybe you can uh, find out how many cases are in Lake Charles because that's one oh, thing I, yeah. that's one thing I never looked sure at that wouldn't be too hard of a, of a Google you would think not <laughs> so so let's let's just run through pros and cons of the place so gold nugget is, is the one that I'm going to go to first and I'm feeling the best about that um, I'm fairly certain that they take temperature checks at the door, but we don't know if it's the door of the casino or the door of the uh, establishment. You know, I think, right. it's, and that's a and that's a big. I think they should be taking it at the uh, the perimeter door of the at hotel the per, at the perimeter of the the yeah the whole building, right? Yeah, not the not just the casino. Uh, but I think yeah. I think they do. They, I think they just do it for the casino though, because I think it's one place they can control. But I mean, they can control yeah. everything else, but. It would be a matter of 
catching everybody when they get off an elevator, you know, from the parking garage. And then, you know, some go to the bathroom, some go to the restaurant, some go to the casino, some go to the hotel. Well, it would just be roping off that area and having a couple employees yeah, just, ready to take ten. Well, I mean, it's just like standing in line for anything else. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll have to see. But I'm fairly... I really think that they're probably only doing it in the casino. I think so also. I think it might be part of the CDC's uh, guidelines. Uh, I hope so. I hope, yes. I hope they're following some of the guidelines. But then again... I'm hoping they're also doing some extra measures. And that's well, that's and where I think they're requiring everybody to wear a mask. One of the th- things that, that I thought about is with uh, Golden Nugget being associated with Landry's, that big corporation that is dealing with food, yes. they're probably, you know, um, a little bit more inclined to overdo it as opposed to a casino that's not associated with that many restaurants that doesn't isn't getting that same information or whatever have you. I just think Tillman is, is, is going above and beyond. Yeah. No, I, I I think so, too. I mean, they should have better knowledge about it, about how to handle it. Oh, well, you know, one thing you should keep your eye out for is which places are giving away free masks or free hand sanitizer. I think they all should be. I mean, if every, if anything, everything that I've read has basically said that if you don't have a mask, they'll give you one. Because even the New York subway has free masks and yeah. free uh, yeah, they're, they're, hand sanitizer. Yeah, they're those cheap blue ones. Well, it's still better than nothing. Yeah. No, but I mean, but everybody's doing that now. I mean, even my place of business is doing that for our for people that come in. You know, it's an appointment only kind of thing, but we still have a sanitation station. You know, that's set up with hand sanitizer and you know tissues and and. Uh, all that kind of stuff that you need right masks and stuff but yeah the, they that's the thing i'm i don't know how they're handling it all we we know they should. all right well we've gone off on a big tangent you said that you were going over the pros and cons of oh. golden nugget so let's get back there to that go. direction all right fair uh so anyway so pros and cons would be uh not sure how to handle well i know how to handle it but uh, elevators. There's elevators that you kind of want to stay away from because you're confined spaces and, and you're touching things. So the garage is probably something I'm going to wa- watch out for. I'll probably take the stairs and go and walk on street level. Um, so, um, but once you get inside the facility, um, they've got like 30, 40, 50 foot ceilings. So they've got a lot of space and they have uh, one of the newer air handling systems out there to sure. clean cigarette smoke and whatever. And, you know, we've been there in the past where, you know, actually probably less than a year, I mean, it was last summer, where the AC failed. And oh, so, that was a miserable day. And, yeah. And so, we lost money at the craft table we, that day because it, it was so miserable. It was hot. Yeah, it was, it was very warm in the casino. And, we helped uh, pay for the AC to get fixed. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, so at least we know that, you know, they it's been it's been fixed it's been worked on so and it, it's a quality system so anyway so air circulation should be good the volume of space is good you know it, it just depends on are they allowing a certain number of people into the casino or are they letting everybody into the casino well and are you would, uh, you should ask the uh, people at that desk when you go through security how many what's the maximum that they're letting in oh well, after i'm in i'll ask plenty of questions yeah okay <laughs> But yeah, no, I uh, hell, I was even thinking about uh, talk going to the credit department, and talking to them. Okay. Seeing if anything changed, and then now that you know, I don't want to. Well, it, it's what you want to try to do as much touchless operations as you can. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so then what happens with your player's card? You know. Do I want to go and check my player's card in at the machine, or is this something that now I can do from my app? Or you know, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. But the high ceilings, the big volume—that's a plus. Um, they've got plenty of uh, space. I mean, it's one of the larger casinos. I think I think Cachada's bigger, has more floor space, but um, it's still fairly spread out unless you get into like the concentrated slot machines that are back to back to back. But, oh, but also, even, is is uh, Golden Nugget still doing their Friday Saturday entertainment? No, nothing, nothing. No more entertainment. None of that. Oh, All wow. that stuff's canceled. Yeah. Wow. So no giveaways. No, no nothing. Nothing where there's a line or a group of people to to gather. Sure. 
I don't know if the pool's open. I don't know if the outdoor restaurants are open. I don't know which restaurants are open. I don't know, you know, are they doing every other machine? I was going to take a look at the video poker. Um, I've heard that, you know, the table games, they're not all going to be running. So it, is PyGal gone? Well, and are the video poker machines at the bars open? The, I would think that, that the bar, all that bar stuff is shut down. I would well, think so. We, we shall see. Or you yeah. shall see. Well, I mean, it's it's so, I went to, you know, my buddy's bar um, yesterday for happy hour. And, you know, you can't sit at his bar because you can cough onto the taps of beer that's in front of you. You know, right. you can talk and you can cough on the, on the glassware. And, and, you know, you're just, you got to stay six feet away. And if you're sitting at a bar, you know, you're not six feet away from the bartender. You're three feet away well, from the bartender. Well, but with the video poker machine, it's a long reach to the other side. So that might be four well, or five feet sure. right there. But then, well, and then, okay, are, how often are they cleaning the machines? Like, I remember in California when they opened, I think they were saying that when you were done with a machine, when you pulled your card out of a machine, that it wouldn't... Somebody was... It would signal somebody right. to uh, clean it. Signal somebody to clean it, and then uh, wouldn't let anybody uh, work on it until it was clean. Yeah, it shut off actually, didn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, that was kind of the thing. Is it shuts off until somebody cleans it? I thought that was that was really really smart. I also heard something about you know when you put your card in one machine, the machines next to it turned off. But I don't know if that actually was doing that it, that was actually working or if they were just turning off every other machine but okay, it'll, be interesting well, so to see, it'll be interesting to see what new technology is there like are there right. more are there more bubble crabs did they add anything or did they take anything away right you know did they make more space i mean that's what okay, i'm gonna, well, gonna look what, for what look other at the pros layout. do you what other pros or cons do you have for golden nugget um well, the pros then was also it's you know it's Tillman Fertitta's deal and he's a hospitality guy, and so hopefully he well the other the other thing is he knows the majority of his customers are coming from Houston, and Houston right. is taking it fairly seriously, and so if he wants to make sure everybody's comfortable leaving Houston to come to his place as opposed to going to Vegas or anybody else, you know he's got to he's got to make it comfortable for his customers, and so I think he understands that part of the customer service. Um, in Lake Charles, and that's the thing. Golden Nugget downtown Vegas and Golden Nugget Biloxi are acting completely different to Lake Charles, and so uh, just need to, to poke that through. But I think they're going to be the best responders, uh, or I'm hopeful that they'll be the best responders. Well, but earlier you said LeBurge was was taking it very seriously, also. Well, okay, so then we go next door to LeBurge, um, in which case their parking garage. Um, I think if you take the stair, I don't know, maybe you can't take the stairs and go to the boardwalk, but I don't know how to take the stairs and get to the front door <laughs> without walking like around everything. So, um, so the parking garage is not looking like a good opportunity. And then, uh, so I'll probably just walk over from Golden Nugget. And then, you know, you've got the uh, a front door and a back door and then the garage door. Um, so they'll probably be taking temperatures at the entry to the casino, too, because that's kind of their control point. And then uh, they've got lower ceilings, so I'm not really excited about that. Um, although, I will say this. Remember when we went up there and they had a, a, a norovirus outbreak? Uh, right. I will say maybe they've got experience under their belt. And so, uh, you know, they, you, might, you might give them a little bit of credit that this isn't their first rodeo. Right. So what are they doing differently? And then that's comparing, you know, how, what are they doing different from Golden Nugget and from the other places. But, uh, but yeah, it's the low ceilings I'm concerned about. Now, they did spread out their craps tables, if you remember. They put the blackjack stuff in between it. So um, there's not, there's not, it wouldn't be multiple tables to crowd. Uh, you know, you can, each, each craps table can have its own crowd. Um, so we'll have to see how many is going. I mean, usually they've got two or three of their four tables going. So again, we'll see what happens uh, midday on a weekday. Um, but then the other thing is, I mean, Libera's isn't isn't that big. It's it's kind of a small casino. Um, you know, you've got your table games down the middle, and and then your uh, your your bar in the center, and then your mach you know machine games. 
but that's it's it's not that big. Poker won't be running, so the poker room won't be going. Right, and I wonder if they are utilizing that area for anything else. Oh, they won't be. Well, that's yeah. Maybe they added a, a couple of machines or something. I don't know. Or they probably just shut it down because they are hoping to open it. And then they'd have yeah. to move things twice. You know, people don't like moving things twice. But uh, but yeah. So anyway, I'm not gonna. I I, I don't feel good about the conditions that Lavares. But so I'm just gonna scout it out. But it, I don't think it's gonna change my mind to go play there um and okay. then uh yeah isla capri um it's it's on a renovated boat and so if everybody knows boats you know those are usually three-story kind of deals and you get craps on one floor and then it's usually a small floor plate you know it's small square footage and you basically can see all four walls from wherever you're standing and it's a low ceiling so you know now you now you're in a confined space with a crowd. You yeah, know, it's definitely a low low ceiling. Yeah, so so compared to the other options that are available, yeah, this starts to get uh, more like I'd rather not until we know what's going on and you know and then are you know are they requiring everybody to wear a mask? You know, in that condition, I would hope so. But if not, then you know look out. So. Right. Um, so yeah, so I'm not really gonna probably go over to Ali Capri, and then instead go out to uh, Cachada to scout that out, because we do like Cachada. It's you know they've always got five dollar tables. I can't see why they wouldn't still have five dollar tables. Um, right. It's I've heard that you know there's some casinos that have been raising their minimums to twenty five dollars and you know and up, but again I think that's uh, geographically based and it's regional or, or, you know, case by case scenario. I, but we'll see. Um, well, I think maybe no, not many places have really raised their minimums yet, but I think later down the road, if this ends up being more permanent, they will have to. Well, well they have in the Midwest. I mean, they have raised the minimums. I've, I've seen people tweet and, and on Facebook and Instagram that they've, you know, some places have gone up. Uh, but then some places haven't. So, I mean, it's, it just depends on uh, the level of customer service they're giving out to their players. And how seriously are they taking this coronavirus? I mean, you it's, it's like you can go to wherever you want to go. You know, if, if you like, if you like people taking it seriously, then you go to the place that people are taking it seriously. If you don't care, then you can go anywhere. But... You know, it's just like, like I was saying, it's it's kind of like smoking and non-smoking casinos. Yeah. You know, some some casinos are smoking and some people, some some areas are not. But I think that's kind of where we're at. So so Cachada has tall ceilings, big spaces. Uh, you know, it, it's 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 touted as having the lar- the largest floor plate uh, for casino and the most and the most uh, slot machines. So. But they've got five craps tables, so we'll see how many they got going at one time. But again, I'm going on a Wednesday and a weekday in the afternoon. So, hell, at least one table should be open. I know that much. So, anyway, so those are kind of the pros. Well, and then, so for parking at Cachada, then it's all outdoors um, and it's uncovered. So, um, right. you know, the outdoor stuff is, is better than the indoor stuff. You know, the question will be um, does Gold Nugget have the any blackjack tables that out by the pool you know because they had the outdoor tables by the pool and that would make sense to me to have some casino games outdoors if they could do it so we'll have to see if they're doing that um, but I don't know if they've opened the pool or not I bet they have I, you don't know that's the whole point of me going nobody knows I haven't seen a picture I haven't seen anything So, um, other than that, so yeah, so we're going out there. Um, I, I'm not going to play. Um, so the other, the other big concern I've got is not just people, but, uh, what I'm kind of calling, um, uh, bottlenecks, um, where, you know, where everybody's got to funnel in and out. And so you've got a lot of people touching the same thing over and over. So what do you do with your player's card? 
you know it's like I'm thinking about actually I've been thinking about uh, I've taken a rubber glove still just just to have you know a couple so when I do have to touch things then I can just throw it away sure you know um, but yeah that's the question then is how much hand sanitizer is going to be all over the player machines <laughs> well hopefully they're you know they've got a, a staff that's on duty at all times cleaning stuff yes yes that that is one of the things that everybody's been talking about is uh, extra sanitation people so so it'll be uh, yeah that's the thing I'll, I'll be interested to see how they're treating every area you know what so um Oh, so, so yeah, so all these bottlenecks. So the good thing about casinos compared to bars and restaurants is there's no doors on your restrooms unless you go into a stall, right. you know, but you don't have to open a door to go into the restroom because it's just a doorway, you know, a portal. So that's that's a plus there. So technically you, well, can, go technically, in and take, it, you can go in and take a leak and not touch anything and wash your hands. I was going to say because even the sinks are uh, motion sensors. Yeah, they're all touch. Yeah, so that's the thing. You're looking for touchless as much, so... You know, even those Tyson dryers and stuff, those are Dyson. <laughs> Tyson. <laughs> I meant Dyson. Uh, but, uh, yeah, even those, you know, the, the air dryers and stuff, I think they could make a comeback. Um, but, yeah, so that'll be interesting to see. I got I think I remember they were limiting the number of people going to the restroom, you know, so that you wouldn't have so many people at the sinks. You know, so I don't know. We'll have to see if they're doing anything about that or not. Right, or if they even physically marked off every other urinal. Right, right. Yeah, who knows? Well, and then do you want to get into a stall? I mean, I guess you got the door. I mean. Well, you know, that was actually one of our one of our old rules when we went to when we go to Vegas is we tried never to use the bathroom in our rooms. We'd always use the facilities <laughs> in the casinos because they were so nice and clean. That's true. and they are, But now, you know, well, we you know start... well, I'll tell you what, dude, you use the handicap stall and you got plenty of space and you don't have to touch a thing. I mean, there you got your five-foot radius. Uh-oh. Yeah. So, where were we? Oh, uh... Uh, bottlenecks so yeah so the restrooms are going to be you know that that's one one place where everybody kind of congregates you kind of got to watch out but you can wash your hands and don't touch your face and hopefully be okay no don't let anybody sneeze on you uh or cough on you and then the one the one big thing is you know they're talking about you know the dice you know that they're going to clean the dice after every shooter and you know they'll probably have like just two sets of dice just like you would do in a poker game you get you know, a deck you're shuffling and a def deck you're using. You know, they'll do the same thing with dice. They'll get two sets of dice. They'll clean the ones that you're not using while you're not using them and then, you know, do that kind of thing. But, um, but so that's dice. And then cards, I don't know. I mean, I guess you could throw the cards away. They kind of do that already with Bacharach and everything. So, you know, I guess, you know, you can throw those cards away. But then um, what are they doing with chips? I've seen pictures of... of uh, casinos that are washing the chips in the morning and they... well, here's a question for you what happens when a shooter throws a dice a die off the table and a person at the table picks well, it up so that one's dirty and it goes goes into the dish bowl <laughs> well i mean you would think but does i mean what if the shooter wants the same dice, same dice. uh then they have to clean it and give it back to him maybe i don't know yeah yeah well, I don't know. Maybe maybe there's no more same dice. Same dice. Maybe not. You know, keep so, the game moving, right? Well, we'll have to see. Well, and again, that's a case by case basis. But, but yeah. So, anyways, I've I've been seeing these pictures of a couple of casinos that you know they're they're washing dice on the table. You know, and you can see them clean chips. And I'm still though, you know chips circulate pretty quickly through a casino and then if you have chips you got to go to the cashier and so the cashier is that one bottleneck that right. you know everybody has to go to and you know it's always a long line and if you social distance then somebody's going to cut in front of you 
that's the worst part about this whole social distancing thing is when you get into a line some asshole is going to cut in front of you <laughs> and then and then what you want to get into it you can't get into his face right you know if anything he's pushing you further back <laughs> <laughs> You know, so yeah, no, I'm just, I'm really concerned. And then, you know, with the, uh, they talk about cutting things down to 25%, so that means they don't have quite as many employees on staff. And I've heard they haven't had as many cashiers on staff either, in which case you should have more cashiers going so you have less people standing in line. You know, all the windows need to be open. Or at least, I I guess every other one to keep your six foot, but... Yeah, I've seen I've seen some I've heard some horror stories about lines being extremely long, uh, and them being understaffed. Well, and we watched that one video of the line trying to get into what was that the D? That was the downtown, D. Yeah, the D. Downtown Vegas, and I mean that line before midnight was crazy, and I mean they were not they were all up on each other. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean that's that's the things that I'm trying to avoid or looking to avoid. So we'll have to just see what happens. But yeah, I I don't... So yeah, so I'm not thinking about playing because I would have to go to the cashier. Well, you could just bring those chips home, but sure. Well, then I... Well, I I would need to put them in a plastic bag and then wash my hands and then, you know, clean them later or something like that. But I hadn't thought about that. But no, I mean, I just... Like I said, this is more of a... It's a scouting trip. Um, I might throw some money into video poker, um, just to run some, you know, some comp money through. Just to let them know you were there. Right. But I don't mean if they, I don't know how they're handling it. And so the other thing is, I don't know if I'll be comfortable, if we'll be ever be comfortable, you know, and relaxed or if we'll be on edge and uncomfortable because of the box that they're putting us in. Well, I will say the uh, the one of the benefits to playing video poker is when you cash out, you can cash that ticket at one oh, of yeah. the, uh, the cash dispensers. Well, I, that, and see, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Though, is, is you know, if if you don't want to handle chips, then you know, then the only way to do that is to play the machines because then they'll give you a, a you know a, a ticket, and then you cash that ticket at one of those you know ATMs that they got around. So yeah, so you don't have to worry about a cashier. So. I mean, that would be the well, thing. I, hope, is, I it, hope this podcast session doesn't come out to everybody thinking that we are like super, super germ phobes. Right, right. No, I mean, we're just, well, we're talking about things before we get there. I uh, mean, I eat stuff off the floor all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and yeah, and, and I grew up eating dirt, you know, so I, I mean, we're, we're okay. We were just assessing the situation and trying not to put ourselves into the wrong situation. Right. And we're trust- trying to. Yeah. This is more about what to do if if you want to do it. Well, minimize your risk. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, just like anything else, you, we're just identifying what's going on, and everybody everybody can make their own decisions. Um, we're just throwing in some of our decisions on why we do our the things our way. Not that we're yeah. telling anybody else to do it, but this is just what we're doing. Um. So. No. I mean. It's going to be different. It's going to be different. The thing is, is are we going to be able to have fun? And that's my worry. I'm afraid that with all the restrictions and everything that they're putting in, that going to the casino isn't going to be fun anymore. Yeah. Well, for a little, I mean, until things change again, but yeah. yeah. I mean, what, until after New Year's? You know, when, when, you know, after the Super Bowl, I mean, is the Super Bowl even going to happen? I mean, there's no more sports to bet on. There's no hanging out and, and watching a game, you know. Yeah. The, and then if you're playing blackjack, I mean, the, there's no more camaraderie. There's there's no more, you know, it's just like our bubble craps and all the computer games going to be taking over, in which case you have no dealers and you have no interaction and everything gets quiet. I mean, well, you know, we know what the number, the, the maximum number of people that are at a crap table, but what is the number of people they're letting play at a roulette table? Oh, I, if they're even doing a roulette, because you all, when you put your money on the table, you're touching each other. Oh, yeah. 
So they might not even be running roulette. Because you know, you're putting chips all over the place with other people's chips. Oh, I bet they're running it, but that's something you can definitely check on. Yeah. Well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll take good notes, and you can quiz me when I'm done. So I'm just wondering if I'm going to eat anything. That's another. Yeah, I was going to say, did you plan on eating inside one of the casinos, or are you going to pick something up to go? Uh, I would like to. I would like to see something where I'd be comfortable. Because that's the other thing. Any, If I hit fast food on the way out, you know, then that's that's a crapshoot too. <laughs> nice. It's funny how many times I've been hearing everybody talk about it's a crapshoot going out, it's a crapshoot doing this, it's a crapshoot doing that since COVID's been around. And most people don't even know what that means. Right. So that means one one time and six time you're gonna get it. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's gonna be it for the pre for the pregame. Uh, okay. I, I think am, you got a lot of good stuff. Well, and I'm I'm just getting to Beaumont too, so I still got a little ways to go. But yeah. but yeah, this is this is plenty. So. All right. Cool. Well. Be safe and uh, text me maybe like past like when you yeah, leave. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll this send you. I can... I'll send you some pictures and, and do what I normally do. And then, okay. Uh, well, there's gonna probably be a nap in, in my future, so. <laughs> well, of course, that's the other thing. Well, you yeah. know, I'm not gonna get there probably. What it's it's a little it's a little after one now, so I probably got another hour. So I won't get there till probably two two thirty. Um. So yeah. So I mean, I'm not leaving till like four or five. Well, and then if you go to Le Jan Casada, that'll, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can walk around the place in a half hour, you know, for each place. Sure. So it won't take me too long. So, yeah, I'm spending like two hours, and then I'm then I'm heading back. Okay. All right, man. Well, uh, enjoy your afternoon and your nap, and I'll talk to you later. All right. Later. All right. See you. Bye. Hello? Are you napping? No. I was playing <laughs> poker. Oh, imagine that. I tried to take a nap, but it just wasn't happening. Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad you uh, were doing something productive then, like learning a new skill. Yes. So, how were the uh, places? Uh, well, I'm leaving Cachada now. And, uh, I don't know, I mean, to say I'm disappointed, that doesn't really make much sense. I mean, it is what it is. But, <clears throat> they're, I mean, they're making everybody wear their mask. They're, ma they're making everybody, all the employees wear masks. Um, only Golden Nugget and uh, LaBerge did temperature checks. So, um, Cushada did not. I guess they're figuring just mainly locals go there, so why why the hell, huh? I I don't know. I don't know. So but uh Oh no wait wait hold on, I'm sorry. No, they did They all they all did temperature checks, that's right. Okay, I'm sorry. It was just he was by himself. But so anyway but then what, you you go around listening for people to cough? <laughs> <laughs> right. So in which case, I mean, well, I'll tell you this. I mean, they all looked the same. I mean, they all looked like they did before all this. I mean, Cachada had nothing but old people. You know, I saw sure. I saw several people in walkers. I don't know if I saw an oxygen machine, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there was one back in there. But I didn't want to go into the slot area, but there were a lot of people playing slots. There were a lot of people. Now, Cajada shut down, like, most of their table games. So, I mean, the whole... So, they had one craps table, and it was $15. And it was not the normal one that's $5, it was the one that's $10, so the one on the back side. And then okay. it was really close to the bubble craps machine. But then all the other tables were not open, and then the blackjack and the roulette that's usually behind... Uh, or right across from the, the craps tables, none of that stuff was open. 
only the tables in the front by the front door those were the only tables going everything else was shut down and then not even all of those tables it was and it wasn't every other one either it was just depends on the game uh -huh. so i thought it was weird because they had two games that were across from each other but it made the people be back to back really close i would have thought they would have spaced out the games better and they did not. And then. Well, Terry Bradshaw keeps saying it's the largest uh, casino in, in Louisiana. You think they'd uh, utilize their space a little bit better? Well, that's the thing. I mean, they they utilize their space by having everybody in there. I mean, well, but I mean, you know, they if didn't. You're, if, you, if, if you're not going to run a lot of your card games, then just move them out the way and spread things out even more. Well, they had every slot machine working though. They didn't do an alternating slot machine. Every slot machine was working. But that was just at Cachada? That was just Cachada. Everybody else, they were every other. Well, not all of them either. I mean, some of them, not all of them. And are we thinking that that has something to do with it being a Indian uh, reservation no, I No, I think it's just management. However management wants to run. I mean, there are no real rules. I mean, there's, there's state rules, but, I mean, it's it's Wild West. I mean, they can pretty much do whatever they want. I mean, it, it's... I don't know who's going to... There is no fine to be had. Nobody's going to arrest anybody. I mean, it's just a matter of they doing the minimum for their employees. But, yeah. no, I mean... Uh, I mean, I would say there were more people wearing masks at Cachada, but it still wasn't 50%. Yeah. And, and then everybody else, uh, La Bears uh, and Golden Nugget, they weren't... Uh, you know, they... I would say it's closer to 25% or less of the customers that were in wearing masks. Now, here's the thing. So they had stickers on the tables at uh, Cachada and Golden Nugget. Of You know, the, the ones that get Cachada actually said, you know, spacing between customers. It, but at Golden Nugget, it was just a yellow piece of duct tape. Right. And they just had it down. And then, you know, it, it's funny. You, you're like, okay you and your girl go play craps right but then she doesn't have any chips and so then you're standing right next to each other which then you're in the spot that nobody's supposed to be at you know and so i mean it was it didn't seem like they were regulating spots at all and you know i can just imagine on, a, on when, to, when it get biz, gets busier at night i mean they just have people all around the table yeah but there i mean there's no real physical divider to separate anybody and so you had people watching you had people you know getting close you know the cocktail waitress was, was still coming by she's wearing a mask but I mean it was like nothing it was like normal I mean they had they had some spacing going on for a few things uh, oh you know what they did do they got rid of the poker rooms completely out of uh, out of Gold that Nugget and La Berge. Oh, and both, both of them got yeah. rid of the poker room. Yeah, huh? completely. Yeah, so there's uh, slot machines in there now. Wow. And they so yeah, they even you know took down the glass that was around the one in uh, La Well, you know, I mean, casinos don't really make a ton of money off off of poker rooms for the amount of room it takes. They don't make do any they? money off of it. I mean, well, they make a rake, don't they, of some sort? Not mu not much. I mean, they they take up more real estate than anything, and then you're winning. Yeah, well, that's you're what I'm winning saying. money yeah. against people. So now, I mean, they've got an ante or something, but right. I mean, there's some kind. They're making. But something yes, per... it's it's not it's not a money maker for the casino. The casino's only doing that for customer service. But if you can't now, um, oh wait, I'm sorry. Uh, LaBerge definitely dismantled the room and added stuff in. I forgot, now that I'm thinking about it, I forgot Gold Nugget moved theirs from inside the casino to underneath the escalator next to the buffet. Oh, that's right. And so they did have that open, and I asked security how many people were they sitting there, or I asked the door person who was going to check my temperature before I go into this small confined room, uh, you know, with a bunch of people. Uh, she couldn't tell me what the max number at a table was going to be, so I didn't even go in. But it looked like there were four at a table. Oh, so Golden Nugget did have their poker room. So yeah, down. so and they had two. Ta I saw two tables working, but it looked like the most they had at a table was four people. So, but uh, but they had yeah. So 
Kishada had one table at had fifteen dollars. I thought it would be five dollars because they always have a five dollar table. Um, but now it's fifteen. And well, how many people? How many people were they letting that on the craps table? Well, there wasn't anybody there. Oh. So I mean, the place was empty. They had two people at the table, and so it looked like they were gonna do three aside. So just because they were bigger didn't mean anything. But they had these stickers on there. But I mean, again, it's it's a sticker. It's not a it's it's kind of distance yourself kind of situation, but I could see somebody coming in without a mask just getting right up next to you. Oh sure, you want to place that one field bet? Yeah. Yeah, no. So I mean, again, it's it's not regulated. It's it it's it's the wild west still. So. Wow. Was, but, how was the? Did you get to see at Casada the uh, fountain area, the uh, drink area that I was talking about? Oh earlier? yeah, it's shut down. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's shut down. The buffet shut down. The hot dog place was open, and that was all I saw. But uh, but the bar was open. Oh, video poker was working at the bars. Okay. So um, at at all of them. So I mean, it, it's kind of like it's still normal, and there were you know couples and people talking and people being close, and you're hearing people yell and scream, and so I mean it was it was just. Definitely less of a crowd, but you know. So it was pretty slow, but but uh, Gold Nugget and LaBert had people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. There, well, uh, Kajada had a lot of people playing slots, and just they just didn't have a lot of table games going. But the table games that were going were had people at them. So I mean, there was like at least two, three people per table that was open. I didn't see many dealers standing around without any, you know, without doing anything. So, but then. Then yeah, then they had a ton of people playing slots. I mean, parking lot was kind of full. You know, I had to park, you know, fourth row behind. So, I mean, they had people there, and yeah, yeah I mean, I I didn't want to walk in certain areas because there were like more people congregated. You know, and then the ceilings got lower as you get away from the craps tables. So I don't know, man. It just I could have played. That was the other thing. I, there was, and then. They had one big long line for the cashier, and then but nobody was social distancing in line for the cashier. And then I just was like, I, as much as I would like to play, I don't want, I don't need to play. And then, yeah. you know, the, I don't know. I just, I gotta get my mind around it. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'd be thinking too much as opposed to enjoying the game. Yeah. Yeah. So. So anyway, so that was Kishada. So I mean, I don't know. Give it a C. I mean, they did temperature checks. They. And well, I'm assuming they, they, hand sanitizer everywhere. They, everybody's got sanitizer everywhere. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I saw masks available. Not that I. I mean, I'm sure you could probably go to customer service or something like that. But I don't know. I mean, I just for the crowd. For. I don't even know how to grade it. But. In my head, I'm just putting it as a C because I probably wouldn't go to a C that often. <laughs> so, um, then LaBerge. So, LaBerge had just one table working and it was $25. Uh-oh. Um, and, um, they, they had every other table game working and they had a lot of, you know, a lot of the back rack was working. They didn't really separate. They, you know, at a back rack table, they were doing every other seat, but that doesn't really mean anything because you can't really fit ch- all the chairs in anyway. Yeah. So I mean, so people were right next to each other playing back rock, and they had a pie gal table. Gold Nugget did not, um, and uh, Kashada did not have pie gal. But um, but uh, Laberge. Uh, they had the cocktail waitresses, the bar was open, I didn't know, oh, the fountain drinks were down, um, I didn't really know, oh, the, the, oh, there was only one entry, you could only go through the front, so you couldn't come in through the back door. Uh, oh, to the casino. Yeah, yeah, because I came in through the back door and I had to go around, you could exit, but you can't get back in, so. Okay. Well, which makes it awkward if you have to go to the bathroom, then you gotta go all the way around. So you gotta find. Oh, a, so then you get yeah. the then you get the bathroom that's inside, which is over by the poker room, by on the other side. But yeah, and then the the Asian place was open, but Jack Daniel's bar was closed. You know, I think they probably all had like one or two places. Saltgrass was open at, at Golden Nugget. You know, but everything else was, and then uh, the diner was open. Oh, 
Oh, the uh, burger place outside of Gold Nugget. Well, let me finish with, with Le Berge. So Le Berge, I think I was finished with Le Berge. So they just had one table, um, and then yeah, it was $25. Now, it looked like everybody was just cleaning the dice after you had a shooter. So they had like uh, like the alcohol wet naps. Okay. And so when they were done, the box man was wiping the dice off. And then, nice one, Corona. Uh, so uh, the the box man was uh, was cleaning the dice uh, with like uh, alcohol wet naps, and uh, then she would just leave them on the table, and then she would uh, wipe out the bowl, and then give the bowl back to uh, the stick guy, and then the stick guy would push out the dice. Um, and then I did see a dice go off the table. In which case, then it went back on the table, and the box man just wiped that dice down and put it back in play. Oh, okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal at all, really. Okay. So, but uh, but then uh, Gold Nugget had their crapless and uh, one uh, regular crap table going. And uh, let's see, it was uh, $25 for both, the crapless and... Uh, the regular, and then the uh, they were full on occasion. Uh, the the regular table was full, and then the crapless table was full. One time I walked by, and then the next time it only had a couple people. So, um, but it looked like it, so they had the yellow tape on their deal, and it didn't say anything on the yellow tape. It was just yellow tape, so you didn't know if that's where you're supposed to stand or if that's where you're not supposed to stand. Right. And then and then it's yellow, not red, you know. So. And then that's when I was seeing, okay, you had, you had like three players on an end, but then one of the, the guy at the end who's over by the don't come. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Uh, you know, he had his girlfriend with him, and his girlfriend wasn't playing, but she was at the table. So then she right. was at a spot that there wasn't supposed to be anybody at. And then they were, you know, on top of each other, which is nowhere, you know, social distancing. So, yeah, it was just, it was just kind of... People didn't care. People, employees cared, but then they're stuck. You know. Well, you know, I I was reading an article, and I'll, I'll send it to you. From CNN was doing a uh, thing on Vegas, and they were saying that uh, that's their concern is you know their their employees and staff are all masked up and, and trying to take all the precautions, but all the guests are coming in and just you know having yeah. a good time. And you know, like we talked about, they're not going to. You know, most of them aren't from Vegas. They're going to go back home eventually. Yep. Yeah, well, yeah, they're going back to California and the surrounding areas as opposed to living in Vegas. Right. Yeah, no, I, uh, I mean, it's, you still had the same kind of attitude, the same, you know, you had your gamblers. I mean, I saw, I actually saw somebody hit the all tall small. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, and, and he was actually taking his time throwing. He looked pretty good throwing. You know, and then uh, you know, I saw another another guy who was throwing, and then uh, some guy bought in the middle of his of his roll, and uh, seven out. So I mean, yeah. it's a, you know, same things are still going on, and then yeah, people are you know showing up just looking at the table, and then crowding. Hey, I don't know how you regulate it. I mean, the pictures from the Bellagio still are the only thing I can think of where you've got physical dividers between spaces in order to keep people away from. You know, away from you. But, you know, they'll still crowd in behind you, I guess. But, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I... And then, so you've got the... All the all the employees, you know, they're masked up. But, you know, when you appear at the table, then you're face-to-face -face with them, you know, three right. feet away. And, yeah, yeah, they're wearing a mask, but... You know, they're the ones that are seeing everybody every day. And then they're not wearing gloves. Now, granted, they could be using hand sanitizer more often than I was noticing. But, I mean, if right. they're picking up chips and placing chip bets and then giving you chips back and paying out, I mean, and they're the yeah. ones that are constantly seeing people, yeah. you know, for an eight-hour, six-hour shift, you know, I just, I'm, it's, I think it's not the risk I want right now. Yeah. Well, and then, I, even I sat down to play some video poker for a little bit and, you just get paranoid with the people standing behind you watching or walking by or, you know, there was a guy or a lady in a, uh, one of those rascal things, 
you know, masked up, you know, looked like she was 70, 80, you know, smoking, coming behind me, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, what the Yeah, it, it, it's almost like you want to try to find that one machine uh, that, yeah, that you that can put nobody, you back to the wall and right, nobody like, can get to you, but yeah, where you're in the corner, Yeah, where you're in the corner and then you can see what's coming at you, yeah. But they don't they don't have those spots in casinos for slots. No, no. They, I mean, I did notice, I mean, they did... If anything, they added more machines. You know, they, right. they took out some table games and added machines. Or, you know... Yeah, I just... I didn't see where they took out things to make more space. Where I thought they would. You know, it's it's everything's still there. But the, the thing that's new is, is LaBerge took out their poker room and added machines. You know? Right. And I would have thought I would have saw, you know, more, maybe more bubble craps machines or more, maybe more electronic right. machines or something, but I didn't see any of that either. Um, was there any roulette tables going? Uh, roulette was working. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't really see anything not working. You know, they didn't have Pi Gow at, at Golden Nugget, but they had Pi Gow at, at um, uh, LaBerge. LaBerge. So, but you know, the bingo places, any place where there's going to be a crowd, I guess they didn't open. So, bingo and poker wasn't open. And then, or, but then again, it was at, at Gold Nugget. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. So, oh, so then I went outside at Gold Nugget to the burger place, which is on the beach. And that place was packed. And everybody's yeah. wearing bikinis. You know, and it, it yeah. was like it was like summertime, like like nothing was happening. And gold it is summertime, right? And well, and Golden Nuggets pool was packed too. Yeah. So and then uh, La Berge, their pool was closed. Oh. Okay. And Cachada's pool is closed too. Huh. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I think Golden Nugget knows what a draw that pool is. Well, that yeah, that that's it's a it's a Vegas style pool in in Louisiana. Yeah, it, yeah, it's crazy, and then it's got a great bar out there, so... No, the bar was, was packed, and then the pool looked packed, and all the cabanas looked, you know, occupied. So, but uh, but there was a lot of people there, people checking in, that was the deal, checking into the hotel. You know, it, you either respect the six-foot line, or you don't. I mean, either you're right, you're right behind somebody, or not. Did you notice that they had any uh, kiosks that you were able would have been able to use without having to interact with anybody? Uh, no, I mean, they, just the normal ones, you know, but nobody was using them. I didn't notice anybody using them. So, like, you know, well, we, we've, Golden used, Nugget. We've, we've used the kiosks at, at Golden Nugget for check-in, and we thought that was extremely smooth. Yeah, yeah, no, I, uh, I didn't see anybody using any of those machines. Everybody was standing in line. Um, and then, yo, yeah, I had to go get a new card at, at Gold Nugget because it, my old card expired in February. Sure. So, um, so I had to get well, a new it, one. So I had to stay in line. That was the last time we were there, yeah. So, yeah, I only have like 320 points or something like that. <laughs> well, we have, we've been, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we haven't been at all. So, but, uh, yeah, and I had a $5, uh, game comp. And I'm like, well, it's a $25 game. <laughs> right, yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do with $5? If it was 10 and it was a $15 game, okay, maybe you can come up with 5 well, and bucks. Even, and but... even if I win it, then i got to go to the cashier to cash it out. <laughs> right. So I'm like, ah, screw it. So, so I, I okay, ran... Okay, well, you gave, you gave Cachada a C. Yeah. What are you going to give uh, LaBerge? Well, I mean, LaBerge with the low ceilings. Um, but I will say that the table... Well, okay, at LaBerge, they didn't have anything on the table, so you could get as many people in there as they wanted. So, again, nobody's distancing at the table. The yeah. employees are wearing masks, and then it's not required for customers. So, I mean, if you're, if you're, if we're on a hot roll or something, and then some, somebody can go, just come right up next to you, not wearing a mask, which is worse than buying in in the middle of your roll. <laughs> yeah, right, or leaning across you and put, patting you on the back or something. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, no, God forbid, you know, yeah, the the people that really want to, you know, don't leave me hanging on a high five. I mean, how many times did you high five at a table or, or you know, bound, pound fists, you know, and, and you're, oh, don't leave me hanging, bro. Even, even I have, yeah, no, I mean, I have too, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. You get I just, a point and people start... You know, uh, yeah. fist bumping you or high fiving you, yeah, you, you do it because you're excited too. It's almost like I, 
I want to play with two people at the table, one on me, me, and one other person on the other side. Right. You know? we'll throw dice to each other. <laughs> I, I make it a twelve foot rule. Yeah. But uh, okay, so Blaberg, what would their grade be? Uh, well, I mean, they only had one table going. Um, like I said, low ceilings. I'd give them maybe probably a C as well. I mean, I or maybe C minus because. I didn't feel like I could distance as fast as as much. Okay. And then you're and then there's a you know constant traffic going behind you at the craps table there. Yeah. So. So. Okay. So both of them get kind of a C, but for different reasons. But yeah, okay. yeah. And then I probably would throw Gold Nugget, you know, there as well. You know, they're all kind of this this C or C minus, just because, you know they. I'd put them down a little lower than than Cachada because Cachada had stickers that said something, and they just put friggin' duct tape out there. <laughs> you know, I was like, they could have done a little more, you know, a little had, put a little more effort into it. Right, because I mean, it's going to be something that's going to—it's not just a week of, yeah. a, of tape being up on there. Well, it's going to be up and, there for a little while. And I didn't touch the tape, but I'm sure that tape is going to leave sure. residue on the uh, on the on the. On the cushion yeah, anyway, and they're gonna yeah. have to replace the cushion anyway. I was like, it just, well, you should be able to clean that up if you have the right cleaners. You know, but yeah. But you know what I'm saying. But yeah, so I don't know, man. I mean, and then it seemed really crowded there. You've got pinch points between the, the regular craps table and the and the roulette table behind it, and then so there's there's a big traffic thing there. So everybody, so you're running into people. And then you got the crapless table where you know it's crapless, so. But it seemed like there was a little more room on that side, but that was a $25 crapless table. Yeah, and that would get real expensive if you start trying to cover numbers there. Yeah, so so I don't know. Um, you know, I'd put Cachada up at the top. Um, now did I did, stop to eat now at I did any, notice, any of the stops? I, I'm sorry? Did you stop to eat at any spots? Not yet, no. No? No, no. I'll find something on the way home. But, uh... No, and, and nothing. I mean, I didn't, nothing caught my attention to stop. But uh, I did notice at La Berge when you were standing in line at the cashier, they actually had um, spacing. Well, you know how you do the zigzag, and you can have a six foot in front of you kind of thing. But once you turn the corner, you're right shoulder to shoulder, right? Right. Okay. Well, at at, at La Berge, they actually put a plant in between, so you actually had. So you did. You actually weren't just going back to back uh, mm-hmm. when you turned okay. the corner. They had space, so they they actually had six foot in between their lines. Uh, so that was that was better for that cashier kind of opportunity. But you know, Gold Nugget was the same. They didn't really have anybody, you know, distancing or spots on the floor. But then uh, Cachada did. They had a big. Uh, you know the velvet rope kind of scenario, um, but then again, it's keep six feet in between you and the person in front of you, and then once you hang a left at the end, you know, and then you're right shoulder to shoulder again. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they, I don't know. It just, yeah, I guess we'll figure out if if this works or if they're gonna modify things like that. But I don't know. I just thinking about playing craps I see now is, is there's extra distractions right you know and and the camaraderie is not really there I mean in, unless you start thinking about the old times and then you're wanting to give everybody high fives <laughs> right you know and and it's just odd just an odd feeling of what the new craps game is going to feel like because it I mean, it's almost to the point where you want to kind of play at the table by yourself again. But then, yeah. that's that's not fun. How was the vibe in the casino? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, Gold Nugget was kind of the same, you know, kind of the way it always has been. It was just weekday. I mean, people were smoking, people were drinking. But, I mean, and then, you know, people were walking around with swimsuits, I mean, just like they normally do, you know, like it was a normal day. Um, same thing with Cachada, or with uh, La Berge. Other than you just had the front entrance, you couldn't come in all these times. 
Oh, that was the one thing, the gold nugget, the back the back exit to outside over by the uh, blue martini bar, that was closed down. So you couldn't come in and out of that. So they did shut down one entrance into the casino. Okay. So they just had the one from the parking garage, the one from the front door, and then the one from the hotel. So three for Gold Nugget, but then, uh, yeah, I think they were just doing La Bears. You could come in through the front, you could exit out any of the three that you normally would. Um, and then Cachada, like I said, I just came in through the front door, but it looked like it wasn't a big deal to come in the normal way from the two different hotels. So. Well, I mean, it sounds kind of what we expected. A little bit. Um, I, well, I was I was hoping for more. I was hoping for a mandatory mask kind of thing, but I right. I just it's tough to enforce when you have people smoking, drinking, and eating, and, eating. and, t- and talking for that matter. I mean, right. a lot of people would pull down their mask to talk. You yes. know, and that's that's kind of the whole point of wearing a mask. <laughs> and then, yeah, then you're you know. hanging out the top of your shorts. <clears throat> yeah, so, anyway. So we'll just have to see, but I don't know. I, I well, don't I see, see, I don't see a rush. I don't see getting any stronger than they are right now. I can only see them getting lessened. Yeah, that's that's kind of my thing is I kind of want to want to see. Well, you know, you, we're we're waiting for these uh Memorial Day numbers to start showing up. Well, you know? I think they already are cuz I mean they're talking about what 19 states are rising. Yeah, yeah, no. So that's that's this week and next week or you're going to see those numbers. So, and then, then you've got Vegas opening up, and then, you know, you've got the protests and everything. So, you've got a lot of activity happening over the last yeah. three, four weeks that yeah, we had, need they, another three, four weeks to see what that does. They were saying there's quite a few cities that are already at their ICU high levels. You know, they, they don't really have any more beds, and so they're, you know, kind of like where we had that extra hospital set up that we never used initially during phase one or yep. during the first wave. Um, but now they're saying there's more cities that are setting things up like that because they're they're hitting their top numbers, you know, in yeah. occupancy. Yeah, we'll have to uh, see what happens. Well, I mean, I can't say I'm disappointed. And it's about what I figured. You know, I, I after viewing so many videos from Vegas, I just kind of figured this would be how it would be in, in Lake Charles, too. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we're we're getting the offers for the free rooms. I mean, I could see, you know, you could stay and still go around. And, I mean, you can avoid people. I mean, you can. I walked around. I, I you know, it wasn't that difficult. But I could so, see on the weekend though, you're gonna have even more people. So maybe it's it's spend the night and wake up at four o'clock it, in the morning. To I would say it from, could be a, a morning gambling kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when when the casino when nobody's up from 4:30 to 6:30, that's your. But you know, some places that were you were telling me at some point that some places were closing for like three hours during that time to. Well, to, I, you know, I had clean. thought, yeah, I I thought I heard something like that, but that that might be in the Midwest somewhere, and it might be one or two, and then that right. might that might stop now too. I mean, once you start seeing what the Joneses are doing, then you're not going to do anything extra. Did you see anybody cleaning the slot machines after somebody got up? Uh, yeah, I did see, you know, you had plenty of, uh, you know, you had, you know, the slot technician kind of look. And then, yeah, they all had, you know, uh, towels with uh, spray bottles. Now, I didn't notice where when I was done playing the video poker machine, it didn't shut down. You know, like I said, in California where they did, where the, the machine was shut down until it was clean. And you played at, at uh, Gold Nugget? Yeah, I played, uh, I put money in at the bar to get a beer for video poker. And then I played at a machine uh, in the poker area. So, ended up getting five uh, tens. And, uh, five what? Five tens. Five of oh, a kind. Wow. With, with, with a deuce, that was a deuce as wild. But I was going to say, how'd you end up doing? Oh, I, I got my money back. <laughs> about broke even okay. yeah well put it put in a hundred dollars and i was down to 60 and then uh hit the hit the um five tens and uh got my money back and i'm like okay well that was that was a half hour of when am i gonna hit something to get my money back <laughs> and yeah you're not you're right you're not gonna hit another big one like that for not really while. not for not for a little bit but 
Yeah, I had, a, I had an opportunity for a, a Royal Flush by one card. I had a Flush uh, with uh, Ace, Jack-10, and, and a Deuce, I think. And then I was, so I thought I'd try to go for the Royal Flush instead of just the Flush. Right. And uh, I ended up getting three of them. <laughs> well, I mean, the flush only what pays times. Yeah, four? That, it depends on the machine, but it was paying. I think it was paying like fifteen. Oh, okay. Versus five, versus five or ten. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you play deuce as wild. It's three of a kind or better. Yeah. So, but anyway, but when the royals showing its opportunity, you still got to go for the yeah, royal. Well, I think. Yeah, absolutely. You definitely got to go for it when it's up yeah. there. So, so five of a kind. Yeah, I took that and then I left. So yeah, so so Gold Nugget knows I was there. <laughs> well, good. And then, um, yeah. So now I'm on my way back. All right. Well, it sounds like you had at least a successful scouting mission because that's what we wanted it to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think we can probably maybe try to play, but I mean, again, it's. I think. Yeah, I think it might be we stay the night and gamble in the morning when we. God, I always hated direction. waking up, trying to wake up at 4:30 or 5 when you're uh, in Vegas. I don't, or in, I don't see when like you're going time. though, there, Bubble Boy. Yeah. I mean, seriously. I, I know, mean, I'm, a, I'm barely getting to the grocery store. Well, I mean, if you're susceptible, I mean, this is there's no controlling at this place yet. I mean, there's areas where you'll be fine, but there's still, you know, crossing paths, and yeah. you know, you got to make sure you don't touch things. But they didn't. Yeah, they well, did. I will say they did have hand sanitizer everywhere. Well, that's good because I'm not afraid of hand sanitizer. Yeah. So I mean, that was that. But you know, it's like I saw, you know, tables of eight at Saltgrass. You know, so I mean, if you're gonna go eat someplace, and they had the tables spread out, but you know. Low, oh, low ceilings and, and in there. Yeah, well, yeah, it's all one family or all one group. You yeah, but you could have easily, you know, if you were staying there, you could easily pick it up to go and go back up. That is room. true. You can definitely do that. You can absolutely get to go and then take it back to the room, which might be the way to handle it for right now. Hell, they might even put it on nice plates and, and a nice cover on it and let you carry it up that way. They will not. That's called room service. No. And that's going to be way expensive. Right. Well, that's a gratuity fee plus a service fee plus a hotel fee plus another yeah, fee. Too many fees. So, uh, well, hold on a second. I'm going over a bridge. I'm going over the bridge from uh, Cachada to Isla Capri. Did you even drive by Isla Capri? I'm doing it right now. I mean, I can see it. I'm not stopping by. I mean, I guess I could just to just to do it, but I, I, I know I know what it's gonna be. It's gonna be just exactly what I left, and in a smaller confinement confined space. The only thing I would actually even suggest you doing is just seeing how many cars are even in their parking garage. I see cars on the roof of the parking garage. How about that? Oh wow! So they're that busy. Okay. <laughs> Well, then definitely don't go there because yeah. between the low ceilings and that, what it sounds like that many people, yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Well, you know, their their limits are probably low. They're, they probably stayed down at, 10, at five, ten dollars or ten dollars. Yeah, I mean, even if they went up just five bucks, yeah, but I mean, they didn't go up to 25. Well, the 25 is where, you know, I mean, if Cachada's 15, yeah. I mean, now, now, now it's not worth the drive to go to Cachada because that was a five dollar table. Yeah. So, no, I would assume, well, I don't know, I mean, to be honest, you don't know until you go in, but like I said, small floor plate, low ceilings, too many pinch points, too many bottlenecks, not worth it. And I would say because of the age of the place, it's probably, well, actually, we've been in enough of those casinos to know, I would say it's definitely got one of the poor circulation as far as AC. Oh, goes. yeah, as far as, uh, yeah, air, air circulation or... Yeah. or purification system yeah they don't they don't have the quality of machinery that the other places do no again yeah, the, sure. the Isle of Capri was the lower of the value of properties and, but we liked it because it was kind of like the dive bar of the group yeah but it's also it's also one of, it's the oldest one uh, between Gold Nugget and La Burge. I don't know about Cachada but 
Uh, yeah, yeah, it's probably older than Cachado, but I can't remember. But yeah, they might be Cachado in that one might be about the same age, but Al Capri definitely is the oldest. But yeah, the air circulation and those low uh, feelings definitely don't make for a good combination. No, no. So, so yeah, so that's off the list. I mean, I would say probably LeBear's or uh, I would say that uh, overall it's off the list. Lake Charles is off the list for now. Until uh, something changes, you know, because uh, I mean, right now, my next adventure I think is probably going to be going to see my family in Florida. In which case, then Biloxi's on the way, and driving right. to Biloxi, I probably, you know, now what's what's that look like? You know, are there are there tables going to be less than twenty five? I bet during the summer they'll be twenty five. Well, it is the summer. Yeah, and those are those are right on the, the yeah. water. Well, I remember that uh, I saw pictures of the Harrah's in Biloxi, and they had the tub going. Yeah. But that could have get that also could have been just a daytime thing versus a, or a morning thing versus an, an evening thing, because we've True. experienced that. But but yeah, I mean, if there's no reason to go to Lake Charles, you know, for then, and then we know exactly what. Uh, Vegas looks like because of the videos. Then, right. well, we can, and we can only assume New Orleans. Well, New is... Orleans isn't open. They're, right. they're, 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 they haven't met, they haven't met Phase One yet. So no, all the rest are, everything's closed in New Orleans. Yeah, the rest of Louisiana well, opened up, open, but New Orleans hasn't. Once they do get open, I mean, the casino will still be similar to everything else we're seeing. Oh, it'll be, it'll be packed. Yeah. I mean, it, that's a destination. I mean, the Harrah's in New Orleans is a destination. You know, and then you've got the other two casinos that we haven't been to, but I think they're riverboats. Right. You know, in which case then you got that same small floor plate, low ceiling combination. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not seeing New Orleans popping yet. Well, you know, it, it reminds me, but Caesar's craps area in that dome that's not that high of a ceiling either um yeah well it's a, it's a it's a rounded ceiling yeah uh, we know that but yeah i mean it's a taller ceiling but it's taller in the center as opposed to the outsides yeah uh, but uh but i would say the circulation in that this that casino is very good no oh, Caesar. yeah well caesar's opened i didn't see any pictures from caesar i saw they had a uh celebratory uh tossing of the dice i think uh uh, i think wayne newton and the ceo of caesars did that well yeah i heard wayne newton and like uh zeus and and some yeah yeah yeah. they were at the front door greeting everybody yeah Yeah. well i heard the owner of the d was at the front his front door greeting people too i I saw those i saw those pictures as well so Yeah. yeah i mean they're they're all well i mean what you're in business for? Well, uh, you, you always know that there's no there. You can't have anybody at that front door greeting anybody who's going to be any nicer than you. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're the owner. Well, and that's you're the face of of what's going on. Yeah, no, definitely, it's good PR for the first day or two, also. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, how many times does Vegas reopen? I mean, uh, they've never, they've never, they've never rec- closed. My recollection, to zero, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, sh- I mean, they, they were places that didn't have doors to close. Yeah, I mean, that was, that, I remember the last time we were in Vegas, we were talking about that, about, you know, some of these places don't even have doors or locks, you know, and then sure enough, they had to shut down, so. I don't know, I mean, you know, if, if things go all haywire, I don't, I don't, I don't see anybody shutting down again. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, that, yeah, I don't think businesses are going to allow it anymore. No, I mean, I just see less and less employees going to work. But I see people, I still see this as a, as a big problem. I think it's only going to get, I mean, it is getting worse. The problem is, is we're not, they're not reporting on it as much as they used to. Yeah, they're not telling, well, they're not, we're, get, we're getting, no, we're getting absolutely no information about what to do and, and yeah. what, you know, doctors aren't talking to us anymore we don't you know we don't know the the symptoms and the after effects and 
And I know. What the hell happened to Fauci? I haven't seen him in like a month. Yeah, right? I don't know. He might be on a podcast and we just can't find him. But, yeah. So, but we'll have to see. But I don't know, man. I, I'm just not... I don't know how I can feel comfortable. Well, I don't know how I can have fun at the casino right now. Well, the problem, the biggest problem is, is, you know, I've always thought, I think we both have always thought that casinos are clean places. Yeah. Like they do a good job of, of keeping, uh, Well, there's somebody know, the always in clean. the bathroom, and yeah. Exactly. If a you spill know, always, happens, somebody was on top of it. They're always keeping stuff clean, but the problem is, is, is all the, uh, is all their guests. Yeah, well, remember when we always bitch about people that were smoking and they would just throw their cigarette on the carpet? Right. I mean, you got the same kind of people now that just yeah. that aren't wearing masks and they don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, you got those same people who would stomp a cigarette butt on their, you know, at the carpet right in front of the craps table. You know, those same people now, you know, they don't... They would go, they go to the casino with the sick. That's the problem. I mean... If you don't, if you feel sick, please don't go anywhere. But if you don't know you're sick, then what are you supposed right. to do? But well, you know, and I mean, I think for us, we definitely want to feel comfortable when we're gambling because. Um, yeah, it's a mental. I mean? It's a mental thing for us. Yeah. I mean, we we it's... we prepare, we plan, we strategize. I mean, there's there's a lot of thought involved and and emotion involved in what we we do and. You know, if if we get pissy or, or well, we would get we would get mad at, at you know different. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Dealers? Uh, no, 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 superstitions. Oh yeah. We would get mad at su- at certain superstitions, and you know now what is what is COVID when you when you talk about. Okay, when the waitress comes and talks to the de- to the shooter, you know, then they seven out. Well, what happens when somebody coughs at the table? Right. <laughs> you know, what happens if the stick guy coughs while you're throwing? You know, or anybody coughs, you know, or sneezes, or, or you know, it's like you now you got a whole nother level of superstitions and. <laughs> well, I don't know if you can even call them superstitions, but yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, but then it's it's just one more thing to that you're not you're not focused on the game about one more yeah. distra- it's a distraction you know it's it's uh, it's it's something that you can't control well when you, I think for you, us we'll, we'll take our time and wait for things to get back to where we want it before we, we you know start gambling again yeah well you know we we talked at the beginning of the year about how you know we were starting over with our bankroll so this gives us time to grow that bankroll naturally versus at the casino. So, you know, um, that's that's one. Two, yeah, we should we can probably, you know, practice more or or actually just practice. We're talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that, man? We're talking about practice. Because um, that was the other thing is now, at, you know, when you go, there should be limited number of spots you're throwing from. You know, right. so so. You've got SR1 and, you know, stick one and stick right one and stick left one, which now is more like one and a half, you know, and there's no stick stick two. Yeah. So, um, you know, I talked about practicing from throwing straight out. I think that's something we need to, you know, we can practice on. We're talking about practice, man. I mean, how silly is that, man? We're talking about practice. And then just see how it goes. I mean, maybe maybe we do go back to Vegas and we do go back to the Bellagio because they've got those dividers and they seem to be taking it seriously. Um, yeah. And we just search out the casinos that, that are taking it seriously, or the craps tables that are. Because um, I don't know, maybe when the rest of Vegas opens up, I mean, Cromwell wasn't open yet, Bally's wasn't open yet. You know, if, if the Bellagio... If it works for the Bellagio, I mean, Aria has the most tables down there, right? Yeah. So what is Aria doing? Aria is owned by Bellagio. It's you know it's the same group. So what are they going to do? But I haven't heard that they're open they're, yet. They're not. They're not. Yeah. So so that's the deal. Is you know which direction do they go? Do they go the lax direction or do they go the stricter? Or do, is it like we were talking about with 
smoking, you know, this is a smoking casino, this is not a smoking casino. This is a mask casino, this is not a mask casino. I, I think it might actually end up down to that, but we'll see. Well, cool, yeah, man. No, I, could, I could see that uh, happening too, where, where a casino caters to all masks. I, I, I could see that going, I mean, but I don't know. I don't know, or do you want those, do you want the gamblers who are actually gambling without wearing a mask too? You know, well, is, is it I mean, hypocritical for a gambler to wear a mask? No. <laughs> so, no, I mean, just opened up. I mean, it's all, it hasn't even been a month since yeah. things have opened up, you know. And if anything, if we know anything about what's happened since March is every week is different. You know, you can, yeah. ba- you can barely plan out two, three days and know what's going to happen later. I mean, and then with with everything else that's going on, and then, you know, us down here in the south, we're looking forward to hurricane season, you know, um, but I don't know, I mean, if you want to play slots, I guess slots is the way to go, but I don't know how you're going to keep people away from you. I mean, certain places you're able to get every other machine, but not all. Well, they definitely walk right behind you. Yeah, yeah. No, you've got, you got people in traffic and all that kind of stuff so you can't keep six foot you can walk around people that's what i was saying if you go to the strip in vegas you know you can you can walk around people and have space but if you're downtown vegas then you're kind of on top of each other because all the places are smaller yeah so and then if you look at you know the casinos across the country well they're all smaller than the strip casinos so which is why gold nugget for us would be you know better to get around but you know, I don't like the position where their craps tables are now. You know, I don't really like anybody's right now. No. Maybe LeBear's. But then they've got they've got no distancing rules between players. So you could have somebody right up next to you. Well, it sounds like we need to get a couple of three or four hundred pound guys as bodyguards to right? stand right behind us. Well, or, you know, like... like you know, if good blackjack people will just buy out the table. We, you need to get, a, you need to get your own table. You need to reserve your own table. Right. You know, in which case we've seen that happen. It just has to be, what, fifty dollar minimum, I think. And then you have wow. to have like like six players. I don't know, but now that you're at twenty five dollars per. Yeah. I'm sure they would do it though. Well, but fifty they, might not be it. It might even be more. I would say fifty, but fifty is probably not enough. It's got to at least be a hundred now. And it's got to be a a time frame. Yeah, Yeah, like two two, to four hours. No, I think they said like an hour or something was the minimum. That's not bad. But yeah, I mean, that would be the way, you know, is, you know, have your own private table. Actually, that, that probably would be the way to go. You know, maybe, hey, well, maybe this now we got now we're working on something maybe this is finally how we can meet some of our listeners because <laughs> we need like three or four more people to do a private table we need three or four clean virus free people well yeah or, or at least people that are going to wear a mask that's the thing if it's our if it's our game we can tell everybody what the conditions are right you know so yeah so hell we could have our own internal temperature check hey we could even make them take a test <laughs> <laughs> that might be the way to do it is just to figure out how to set up a private table yeah. but then how much scrutiny are we going to have on our throwing yeah. I, don't I, don't think, I don't i don't think they'll care any more or less They're not not at not in lake charles no well, hopefully not but and then, then instead of playing five or six sessions over a two-day period or whatever, you're talking about one session for an hour, and that's well, not, that, that's all you do. Well, we already talked about we don't want to play for a long period of time anyway. Anywhere from you know about an hour and a half and under, right? Yeah. So no, actually, this could be a little more controlled. I I, I hadn't thought about this, but I think this might be the way to think about it. Is yeah, do your private do a private. See how to do a private table. 
because they've got plenty of tables. I mean, I don't know if it's a matter of. Uh... I think it's probably just more of a scheduling issue. You know, they have to make sure they have enough people to run a craps table. Right, right, yeah. So I mean, that would be like, what? I guess if you got a special party, or if you, I mean, you almost have to have like your your, you got a room and and you, it's like a faux ba- bachelor party or something, or somebody's birthday. Yeah. You know, that could be, that could be interesting. Well, you know, well, okay, so now we talk to the credit department to get your credit set up. We're getting a hotel room, and then now we're trying to get a private table. Uh, that maybe, maybe, maybe now we get a host. Well, if you're bringing that much in, because, I mean, you're probably talking about, you know, a $5,000 buy-in. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we're also talking about not nearly going as frequently as we used to, so now we're going, hell, quarterly. Yeah. I mean, once a month would be extreme. But yeah, we, now we'd have to buy, you know, we'd have to find uh, three, four people with a five grand buy-in that would play by our rules. <laughs> but... Yeah, interesting. We'll have to work on that. We'll have to think about that. And I did okay, want to start. Glad, the glad one, I could give you something to think about. The, yeah, the one thing I, I didn't do the, that we talked about doing that we didn't do is we never emailed questions to Gold Nugget. Oh, uh, true. Yeah, so maybe that's what we do on this too is just kind of talk about yeah what what it would take to do a private table, how many people, and then they could probably give us all those answers. I bet they'd give you some answers. Yeah. So maybe we do that as opposed to going there is now we start doing electronic correspondence and then we start practicing and then we practice. We're talking about practice, man. For having a five grand by, uh, bankroll. Because that's what it's going to take to get our own private table. And I think, you know, of course we could we could do our own private table. For It's like, it's like going to the movies or, you know, okay, yeah, we're going to gamble from seven to eight. You know, if it's on our calendar, we'll do it. And especially yeah. if, we, if nobody else is going to jump in, then that's really good. I think I think that's that's the way we have to go. Now we're no more five dollar tables. Now it's private tables. I mean, it's the only way to feel comfortable, right? Then you know everybody at the table. If we're trying to get to a, a comfort zone and, and a place where we can be comfortable. Then it's knowing everybody at the table, or at least, you know, being familiar with them. Yeah. And then nobody else jumping in your game that, that you know, you can control nobody bumping into you, for the most part. It's just a matter of how much is it going to cost. Yep. So, it's only money. It is. But, uh, but yeah, no, I would say we, uh... Uh, hit the practice table. We're talking about practice, man. And uh, start working on uh, playing at higher levels because we're probably going to end up playing at a $100 minimum table. Ouch. Talk about fun practice. We're talking about practice, man. $100 table with five grand buy in, is that enough? <laughs> Well, you know, I was just thinking one that's one twenty on the six and eight, so two and four or it's two forty. Yeah. Well, at times ten, so yeah, twenty four hundred. Yeah. And that's not even if you're playing a pass line or anything yeah. else. Yeah, okay, so five grand should be okay with a hundred dollar table. Well it's fifty it's fifty hundred dollar bets. Yeah. Well and then what we're saying for an hour? Or whatever their minimum time that we can reserve it for. Do you do a minute? How much time would you think? If we can do it for an hour, is an hour good enough? And then what? You do it one day, you know, two days or I mean, unless two you're times. Winning. Yeah, I guess if you win, then you do it again. But if you don't win, you probably don't do it again. Yeah. Not until we have two five five grand bankrolls. Right. Okay. Uh, I like that. I like that idea. Okay, well, because start working cause, on that. Well, because then you could also, you could technically make sure that table's secluded from the others. 
Well, you could definitely, they would definitely probably wipe it down before you started. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, that's not that I, I, we could wipe it down for that matter. Right. Because all, all we really need to wipe down are the handrails. Yeah. And the, and the, where you put your chips. But to be honest with you, you're playing with their, you know, the chips aren't, you know, second we start touching chips. Yeah, no, it's the chips. You can't touch your face. You know, you just got to stay away from your face. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, I think it's, it is what it is. You you can clean the chips, but they're still going to be dirty. And then once you start touching them, then, yeah, you just got to make sure you keep your hands clean and don't touch your face. And don't let anybody sneeze on you. <laughs> right. So, well, all right. I guess now we got something to think about. We at least we we have we have hopes and dreams still. Right, right. You know, I, I mean, I still want to go to Vegas, but I'm starting to think that Vegas might be more of a tourist thing. You know. Well, we've talked about just going and enjoying the city, just because we like to be able to walk around and, yeah. and just people watch and look at. I mean, well, the one Vegas is a beautiful place to walk around in. The the one thing we we figured out or that we discussed about Vegas now is since the majority of casinos that are opening, which I, I'm hoping all of them are going to open, uh, they're doing free parking. And so now that, right. that there are places doing free parking, uh, now renting a car makes sense because then you're not sharing a taxi with everybody else who's in town and you can keep your car clean. Um, and that's one less thing to worry about. So, and then once you have a car in Vegas, then sky's the limit. You can go anywhere you want. And then, right. then you don't have to well, stay Well, actually, that would, and that would actually be quite fun because other than downtown and the Strip, we've never really been anywhere else. No, you know, no. we don't really go Well, and we could also, and then you can also support local restaurants and local places. And, you know, once you get off the Strip, then you can actually support local. Yeah. You know, and that's something we've never been able to do because we've never had a car. So, yeah, I mean, our... A, a trip to Las Vegas would be would involve a car now that there's free parking. Um, but again, I'm not sure about the three-hour plane ride. Yeah, that's the other side. Yeah, you that's know, the other I mean, we can we we've got a an option of yeah, wearing a mask and wearing goggles and don't touch your face. Um, but it's still that's a small confined space for three hours. With not such a good circulation system. Well, yeah, with no circulation system. So, yeah, I mean, until until we hear better reviews on how to handle that situation, I, again, I don't think flying is. Well, it's not in your. Yeah, you it's not in your future. Least, you'd think they'd at least crack a window for you. Right. <laughs> you'd think they'd be able to get some fresh air. All right. So. Well, uh, I think that's going to do it for this episode then. Uh, you know, I think we talked about a bunch of different things. I think we talked about all the casinos. And um, uh, I guess we'll just kind of put this podcast on pause until we uh, decide to hit the road and do another scouting trip or decide to go and check out the check out the hotel and see about getting a, a private table. But... Well, maybe once we start uh, practicing. practicing a lot more. We're talking about practice, man. Yeah. And if we start keeping statistics, it might be interesting to do an episode on... Uh, yeah, maybe we do know, that. Numbers. Maybe we just maybe we throw around and talk while we're throwing around or something. Maybe We can, we can try to do something different. So maybe, maybe we do a, pra- a practice podcast. We're talking about practice, man. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Well, at least keep people interested. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, hopefully y'all are, are at least interested in some of the things that we're talking about (laughs) but well already sir well thank you for uh for helping out with this and uh thank you all for listening yeah drive safe on the way back already sir and uh sounds good yeah i guess everybody on the podcast take care we'll talk to you soon cheers adios Red Eye Gamblers, thank you for your time and hope you got a little something out of this week's podcast. Here's to rolling sevens on the come out and may your sixes and eights always be hard. Cheers.